Yes, here we are. It's Cannabis News. I'm your host, Joe Clare. It's October 8th, 2019. The show, as always, is presented by the Marijuana Times. Find some marijuanatimes.org. Bunch of great articles there and more, as well as this show. If you click the video tab, marijuanatimes.org today. Talking about legal cannabis sales contributing to Canadian GDP. Just how much? Well, you have to wait and see. That's what in the business we call a tease. Now you have to wait to find out the number. See, I'm a broadcasting professional also. A uh, panel in Arizona got a little heated when talking about marijuana legalization and is legalization coming soon to Mexico. Some big-time lawmakers are saying yes. When will that happen? Well, you have to wait and see. See, I'm, there's a whole thing going on here. Before we get to all that, of course, Cannabis News is brought to you by NatureSide, nature-side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Grow safe and poison-free with NatureSide. Don't use harmful chemicals on what you are growing, especially if what you're growing is something someone's going to be ingesting, That's whether it's cannabis or something else. NatureSide is the way to go. Nature-side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News, now for over 500 episodes. Thank you, NatureSide. This first story is by Jason Sander. At marijuanatimes.org, legal cannabis sales contributed $8.26 billion to Canadian GDP. That's $8.26 Canadian dollars. Uh, that is from October 2018 when legal sales started in Canada, which I hear in a rough little, about a week, a little over a week. They're going to be celebrating their one year anniversary of legal sales in Canada. Uh, it goes through July 2019. These are according to Statistics Canada where this number comes from. According to the report, traditional industries like oil and gas extraction, mining, construction, manufacturing, and quarrying have all seen a bit of decline, of a decline. The most notable of these declines is in the oil industry, which dropped about 3%. Um, So it's one of the fastest growing industries, basically, in Canada, despite, as we chronicled here, the slow start. Things have picked up over the last several months. Sales are increasing every month. So they've kind of broken through the log jam and now are bringing people into the legal market, uh, which is what they're trying to do. Uh, So you can check that out. Uh, Also, uh, 6,000 jobs is the number I was looking for in the industry in Canada. So there you go. Jobs, jobs, legal sales, all these things are good. What they do in Canada, of course, is uh, work on increasing the supply, which it seems like they are doing More supply, of course, lower prices, more choices for consumers, and that is the key to a successful marijuana market industry, whatever. Lots of competition, lots of uh, choices for consumers. All good things. PhoenixNewTimes.com is where this next story comes from. It was almost a brawl. Marijuana panel descends into fighting and yelling. The To Legalize or Not panel at Phoenix's Juniper Library on October 5th was billed as a chance for the public to learn more about the initiative being circulated to legalize marijuana in Arizona in 2020. Instead, attendees learned just how intense the state's debate around marijuana is due to become in the next year. I am talking, so that means that you are a radio and you are receiving right now, Republican State Representative Walt Blackman said to Zed Therapeutics Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ed Westerfield at one of the most heated points of the panel discussion. <laughs> I am a radio and you're a receiver. Well, that's a dated reference. There's not a lot of people. <laughs> not a lot of younger folks, if you will, that are going to get that reference. Radio, what's that? This thing. Before the internet, we had to use it listen to music. You had a little dial. And we go <laughs> in between stations. And then you'd find a station. Like, oh, there we go. You had to receive a signal from the air, from the radio antennas. We receive the signal and then play the music and or talk and or commercials for you on your radio receiver. It's kind of like satellite radio, but it was from like towers and stuff instead of satellites in space. There we go. Nice little primer for all of you out there. (laughs) Not quite familiar (laughs) with the concept of a radio receiver. At a different point, Blackman heckled Westerfield as the doctor stood in front of the crowd to argue cannabis isn't a gateway drug. We got a little clip of this coming up. Panelists of the 90-minute event Organized by the Phoenix Cannabis Coalition, including Blackman, Westerfield, Arizona Chamber of Commerce, 
Uh, Cannabis Chamber of Commerce board member Mason Cave and former Arizona Libertarian Party Chair Michael Kaliski. Missing from the panel was a representative from the Smart and Safe Arizona Act, the proposed initiative and campaign now gathering signatures to put legalization on the 2020 ballot. Um, and that's because they were not invited. <laughs> they were not invited to the event and talking about their initiative. Um, the moderator twice dodged questions about why nobody who helped draft the initiative was invited to sit on the panel. Despite the initiative being over the overwhelming theme of the event, I invited a legislature, I invited two people who were in the cannabis industry, and I invited a libertarian, he said. Uh, responding to the same question, Michelle Westerfield said, I didn't feel the need to have them here. I wanted new faces, new eyes, new opinions. It's <laughs> dumb. That's such a dumb, such a vapid response. I wanted new faces, new eyes, new opinions. That didn't include the people whose initiative you're talking about. Their, their opinions are now old and they're not valid anymore. We have some new opinions. It's a stupid, it's a stupid response to just a mistake. They should have been there. Why wouldn't they be there? It makes no sense whatsoever. Anyway, here's a little clip of uh, the doctor being heckled by, I guess this is the Republican state representative, the bald gentleman doing said heckling. I said we have an addictive society. Yeah, and you know why that is? Why is that? Because people get addicted because of abusive childhoods. You know, this is just be calm. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Why are you shaking your head? Talk to me. Don't talk to me. No, I'm talking to you. Oh, so listen. We're turning around. You lost, with, you lost your train of thought? Yes. You nervous? I got yes. you flustered? I got you shaking. I got you. So the uh, the bald gentleman doing the heckling is obviously quite the a-hole. Uh, it's a common tactic for someone who you don't want to make their argument. You start with the heckling, you start with the the heckle, pause, heckle, and then when they, uh, they lose their train of thought, you say, lose your train of thought? Do I got you shook? Do I got you shook? Are you flustered? And you do this little head bob thing that he did. I got you shook? Idiot. <laughs> An abject idiot. That dude is. The dude in the suit, the bald guy. Like I said, I guess is the, uh, the Republican uh, representative who was heckling the doctor. Republican State Senator Walt, or State Representative, rather, Walt Blackman, uh, who has no coherent arguments, so they will do things like that. They have to interrupt. They have to try to, to get into people's heads and make them angry, and because that's all they have. You know, it's... 2019 is not the time to be in the marijuana prohibition business. It just isn't. Now, the 80s, the 80s, that was marijuana prohibition. That was the wheelhouse there, son. But 2019, you're finding a losing battle. And, uh, well, I, don't, I was going to say it makes you become kind of an a-hole, but I don't know if that's what that guy's problem is. Maybe he's just like that naturally. Maybe that's his default position. <laughs> his default personality is a-hole. I don't know. I don't know him. His last story is from MarijuanaMoment.net. <laughs> Mexican Senate leader says marijuana will be legalized this month. Holy crap! Leader, the Senate leader of Mexico's ruling party said that the lawmakers will vote on a bill to legalize marijuana for adult use by the end of the month. And there are numerous pieces of legislation uh, that pertain to legalization. They're already on the table, but Senator Ricardo Monreal of the Morena party said his chamber is nearly done crafting a new reform bill that will be the product of weeks of public forums and open session debates. Members of the other half of Mexico's legislature, which is the Chamber of Deputies, it is not Harry Potter novel, is a part of the legislature in Mexico. The Chamber of Deputies will be invited to weigh in on the bill. I know, that's a weak joke, but we're keeping it light. Keeping the mood, keeping the mood light. We're thinking they will bring the law out, approve it at the end of October, Monreal said. That's the schedule we have. I mean, the lawmakers are expecting to meet a Supreme Court deadline to end federal cannabis prohibition. Of course, you may remember last year, the court ruled that the country's ban on personal possession, use, and cultivation of marijuana was unconstitutional and said the government must formally legalize those activities by October. The Senate held a series of events in recent weeks meant to solicit public input on legalization proposals and hear from experts on the issue. 
in order to inform their bill. Um, Mario Delgado Carrillo, coordinator of Mariano's party bench in the Chamber of Deputies, filed legislation to legalize and regulate cannabis last week, but he proposed having the government run the market to prevent large marijuana firms from monopolizing the industry. Think about the logic of that for a second. We don't want large marijuana firms, S, plural, monopolizing the industry with the government, singular, to monopolize the industry. See the obvious problems with that. Having three big corporations run the industry be three. Having the government run the industry is one. At least the three would be competing against each other. The government's not competing against anybody. No, then no competition, no consumer choice, uh, less innovation, less incentive for things like customer service and quality products and low prices. Because after all, if the government's selling it, who cares what the price is? You can make whatever you want. I'm not going to go to some other government to buy it. I'm not going to uh, Mexican government 2.0 down the road and get it from them at a lower price. Well, if the government's selling, that's it. Uh, luckily, neither Monreal nor President Andros Manuel Lopez Obrador are in favor of having a state-controlled cannabis program. Uh, Correa later clarified that his bill was destined to reflect his personal preference. Uh, Monreal said he's willing to incorporate certain ideas in the lawmaker's proposal. However, uh, state control, giving the state a monopoly on sales of something does not prevent a monopoly. It enshrines it in law. I know, I know we've had this discussion a lot about the fear of big corporations but as I've said before, and I'll give you the Cliff Notes version, every industry, everything we buy comes from big corporations. Because you know why? Because lower prices and better quality, more variety, those things that are large corporations provide. You can slam Walmart all you want, uh, Amazon, uh, fast food chains, big grocery chains, but most of us get most of the stuff we have and enjoy from those very companies. It's not monopolies if a couple big companies dominate most of the market. Because not only is there room under those companies for thousands of other companies to be profitable if the market's big enough, but the big companies tend to fight each other. You know, Walmart and Target and Amazon, they control a lot of the retail market, but they're busy fighting each other and cutting prices and trying to undercut each other, which is good for us. When they're trying to slice each other's throats with lower prices and more stuff that we want, that's good for us. Lower prices, more stuff. Now translate that to the cannabis industry. Lower prices, more cannabis, more cannabis products. It's very simple. It's very simple. And if the government controls it, none of that happens. None of that happens. You get the DMV. You get the post office. You get the food stamp office. No customer service, no incentive. They don't care. What are you going to do about it? Go to another government? Like I said, no, you're not. You go to the illegal market, they don't care. You're already there. There's no sweat off their nose, to use a turn of phrase. <laughs> so, I don't know. But the big news, of course, is the Mexican Senate working on cannabis legalization. So we may be getting big news south of the border from the United States here very soon. We'll cover it here as we cover all the stuff. That's what we do. We cover cannabis news, hence the name Cannabis News. We're here five days a week. Search the Marijuana Times on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. We're also on Apple Podcasts for the audio version of the show. MarijuanaTimes.org. Articles. This show. Bunch of great stuff. Go and check it out. Thank you to Nature Side, Nature-Side.com, and their organic, all-natural pesticides. Thank you to all of you for watching and listening, sharing, liking, commenting on the videos, and spreading the truth about cannabis with this show. You are awesome, and we'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. Cannabis News.